What is up, party people? Welcome back to The Daily Brew, the devotional where every day we drink a new brew of coffee and we see what God is brewing for us in the Bible. Yes, it's cheesy, but it's true. And you join me here in Auckland, New Zealand for day 279 of 365 days of Bible reading. It is such a joy to have you with me today. I'm looking forward to getting into our brews and I have an apology to make in just a second. But let's talk scriptures before we go any further. A massive welcome to everybody on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, and of course all of our other platforms from around the world. Psalm 118, verse 1 to 16. Colossians chapter 2, verse 6 to 23. And Jeremiah chapter 11, verse 18 to chapter 13, verse 27. So those are our scriptures for today. Let's get into the bruise. Not quite the reason that we're here, but arguably quite a large reason. Today, I made a mistake yesterday, I've got to apologise, we uh, did not finish all the flight coffee variations for the bomber, we had the plunger, we had the espresso, and I thought we'd done the filter, but we had not done the filter, today, we're going to be having this bomber as a Chemex, and I'm really excited because I think this is going to taste so, so good, if it's anything like the last couple of days, I'm so excited to give this a go, I promise. I haven't even given this a go at home yet. This is the first time trying it. I'm so excited. Let's give this a go. The bomber as a Chemex. A Chemex. Let's go. Mm. Jeepers. That feels illegal. That's very, very good. That is... Oh, do I want to say that? This is the thing when you're 279 days in. Can you say it's your favourite? It's definitely up there. I mean, this is pretty close. Like, it's a 10 out of 10 for me. I mean, it's, it's, it's honestly, it's mind boggling how accurate the tasting notes are there. There's this orangey, chocolatey flavor that's in there, which is lovely, lovingly coated in this, like, radical, like, I don't even know, like, radical caramel flavor. It's honestly, it's wonderfully complex. This right here. This has got to go to the top of the list for me. Absolutely wonderful. 10 out of 10 for me. And do you know what? Actually, all three have been phenomenal. I'm bumping up the other scores. I don't even know if I'm legally allowed to do that. We'll have a debate about this later. But the other, the 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 plunger and the espresso, it's closer to 10 out of 10 for me. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. That is it for the brews today. I'm so glad we came back and we had this as a Chemex. I almost robbed you of that. I robbed me of that. Of this horrible. I'll repent later. That is it for the bruise, though. Let's get into the Bible, the reason that we are here. One of the things that I've had a big wrestle with in my life is rejection. I find myself thinking about or worrying about what happens if people I know and love turn and reject me. It's an irrational and not Christ-centered fear that the enemy uses to box me out and box me into a corner and disable me from being uh, effective for Christ as a husband, as a Christian, and as a pastor. One of the things that has really helped me, though, is this psalm today. We have to realize how big God is compared to all the things that we make bigger than Him. When we do, it actually increases the fear of the Lord in our lives. As God gets bigger, the things that we fear or we face regarding insecurity get smaller. I love this verse uh, in chapter 4, verse 4 to 7. It's a passage of Scripture that will come up on the screen. I wanted to read it to you today because it is really, really powerful. It says, Let those who fear the Lord say, His love endures forever. When hard pressed, I cried to the Lord. He brought me into a spacious place. The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do do to me? The Lord is with me. He is my helper. I look in triumph on my enemies. I love that. The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. For me, it's rejection. But for you, you might just struggle with jealousy. Or maybe you have a fear of not having enough. Or maybe you're afraid of the dark or aeroplanes or apples I don't know whatever it is you have to get to this point where you're like man the Lord is with me I will not be afraid because the Lord is with me and he is my helper I look in triumph over my enemies come on man this stirs your faith if it doesn't check your pulse for a second this is good but the best verse in this psalm for me is verse 8 here it is on screen now it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in humans we do need to learn to trust in humans and we need, we need to learn to trust each other, but not without seeking refuge in him. And more importantly, not without seeking refuge in him first. This is so freeing when it comes to my insecurities. And when my insecurities come, I'm like, well, what am I actually afraid of here? Being rejected by man? Well, I put my refuge in the Lord. 
I'm going to learn to trust people, but my refuge is in the Lord. It's so freeing, seeking refuge in Him and trusting people second. You know, the truth is, is that we all need Jesus. The church that is getting this letter from Paul needs this simple reminder. They added too much to their faith that wasn't Christ-centered. And I think if I'm honest, we do this too, especially in the West. We're very good at adding in more things that just complicate our faith far more than it needs to be. But we actually don't need to offer anything more to Jesus than ourselves. Or we actually don't need to offer more than Jesus to other people. He doesn't need anything that we have to bring. Jesus is enough. I think that's part of why insecurities get us. It, we, we, we think in ourselves that we're not enough or that we need more stuff to compensate like people's approval, wealth, houses, material possessions, the list goes on. But Jesus, Jesus is enough. Verse 8 to 10, th- these two, these 8, 9, 10, these three verses spell this out to us. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. For in Christ, all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form. And in Christ, you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. I love these three verses because in Christ, we see that we have been brought to fullness. If you're not full right now, friend, you just don't have Christ. What philosophy or thought patterns do you have that you need to drop? Do it. Do it quickly and enable Jesus to be all that you need. And finally today in Jeremiah, we're reminded that we do not to be afraid of, we do not need to be afraid of pressure. I've said it before, but I think that there's a a theology that's crept into the church that's wrong. It's this theology that if it's hard or negative, then God isn't in it. But actually, it's the pressure that God allows us to walk through that creates strength. And often we actually need to walk through this pressure and pressure seasons to enable the growth that we require to withstand the weight that God asks us to carry. Jeremiah Jeremiah reminds us uh, in the first part of 11 verse 20, chapter 11 verse 20, when he says this, it's coming up on screen, a lot of scripture that I'm reading today, but just go with me on it because I think it's helpful to actually read it. It says this, but you, Lord Almighty, who righteously, uh, righteously, who judge, what? But you, Lord Almighty, who judge righteously and test the heart and mind, dot, dot, dot. Now he he finishes that, but what? I want to just focus on this. He judges righteously and he tests the heart and the mind. Jeremiah goes on and he says, let me see your vengeance and uh, on my enemies, which look, it's a powerful prayer to ask of God. And it does show you the immense pressure that Jeremiah was facing. But here, I, I need you to read this and I need you to get this. God tests the heart and the mind. And part of the pressure that we face in our hearts and in our minds is the testing that the Lord allows us to go through to see how we're going to handle the pressure that comes our way. The pressure to be a prophet for Jeremiah and to stand what, for what God is saying, despite the culture of the world around him, was really hard. However, it enabled him to be strong in his conviction, and he never swayed from this warning that he had to bring. Friend, I want to encourage you, stay with God in the pressure. Don't give up. You never know what God is developing in you through this pressure season. Three. Verse of the day. Verse of the day today, Psalm 118 verse 13 says, I was pushed back and about to fall, but the Lord helped me. This is going to help somebody today. You might feel like you've fallen back. Friend, God is there. You might feel like you are about to fall. Friend, God is there. The Lord will help you. Don't worry. He's got you. And that is it for the Daily Brew today, day 279 of 365 days of Bible reading. We are so close to getting to that 300 mark a couple of weeks away now, and we'll be on the road to 65 days. The other thing too is if you've been doing this since January 1st, then this is almost, it's quite a somber reality that the year is almost done as well. But congratulations if you have made it this far with every single day of Bible reading. I pray that this is stirring your faith for more. Hey, I want to encourage you that if this is your first day and you stumbled across this, welcome. Great to have you here. Make sure you go back to day one and start from the start. Don't wait till the new year. Start today and build on this. Let this build day upon day so that you can go deeper into your uh, relationship with God and see what God is saying from Genesis all the way to Revelation. Hey, it is the end for today. Tomorrow, it is another set of seven completed. So we've got a cold can or bottle of coffee and I found some good ones. Can't wait to show you that for tomorrow. 
But if it is the start of your day, have a great rest of your day. And listen, sleep time. Good night, sleep tight. And we'll see you back here tomorrow for another day of the Daily Brew.